All right, today my presentation is on scene, is on scene and making cultural represent, representation, the poor, representing the poor. As many as you know, uh, The Pursuit of Happiness portrays Will Smith as the character Chris, um, which, which they, Chris ended up with a family, with his family, wife, son, and they had everything. They, they were selling monograms and stuff to hospitals so that they can make money and stuff so they can have more money and coming in. But then he started to get too happy because of the amount of money that he was making and started to, and started to try to, try to buy more. When he signed into a contract where he had where he had brought so many monograms that he he had too many and that he couldn't pay off the amount of money that he had paid for the monograms and and he wasn't selling the monograms fast enough and his wife ended up leaving him and then him and his son they went from living in a house I mean apartment to living in a hotel to living. In a homeless shelter to living in the subway. Then one day, Will Smith, which portrayed Chris in the movie, had uh, got into a taxi with his uh, millionaire broker. And a broker had one of those cues with all the different colors on the side. He had to get them on the same side. And he had said, he has, he had told, and Chris had told the broker, I can get them all on the same side. And the broker said, No, there's no way you can because nobody can can do it. And and Chris said, Well, watch me do it. And the taxi drove him around, all around, till Chris, and finally got all the colors on the same side. And then the broker told him, he said, if you ever need anything, just let me know. So Chris met up with him after he got his card, and and um, and then they went to a ball game together, Chris and his son, and then the broker and his son, they went to a ball game, and I sat up in the, in the box and watched the game. And then Chris... And Chris um, asked him uh, how do he how did he become a broker like him, and he told him. So he ended up going for an internship and everything like that, and and went through the whole process with the rest of the interns. and took the test at the end, and at the end, Chris ended up scoring the highest on the test and got the job as a broker, and now making millions of dollars. And so, so homeless people they can go from being homeless to millionaires, and in a little in a matter of of months. Or our cup our year or so, and it's a story I was reading that was real that was that that really caught my eye and stuff on online. It was this little boy, his dad, and told him that one day he's gonna take him to show him how homeless people live, so he can be grateful for the things he have. So the little boy saw homeless people living in boxes, walking around in the woods, through the park, playing music around fires, playing music on the sidewalks, and getting money for playing music and just was sitting on the sidewalk. And, and cooking their food on fire. And when they was on their way back home, the little the little boy father said, "So how you how you feel about that? Are you grateful now that you that you have everything and that you living like this?" And he said, "No." He said, "I had a good time." He said, "I got to play in boxes. I got to walk through the park. I got to I got to walk through the woods and go on an adventure." He said, "I got to sit around a fire and and listen to music." He said, "I got to sit around a fire. Period. Like we was camping out, like a barn fire." And he said, I, I experienced so much stuff that I never experienced before. He said, I had so much fun. He said, I wish I could do it again. And his dad thought about it. He said, why? He said, because all the stuff they did, it was fun. And, and his dad thought about it again. He was like, well, you know what? You shouldn't judge people by the little things that they have. And just because they're poor, because they can still make the little things that they have fun, too. So... So you should never judge a, a book by its cover in that in that case, because you never know how how they you never know what's really going on with them and and if they having fun or if they really sad or not. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about Carlos Whitaker. He's a famous um, famous songwriter and famous composer and stuff with songs and music videos. He he was in in Atlanta, Georgia one day in a park and he was setting up they were setting up and getting ready to make a music video and then next thing you know they had um they they start he started to play his guitar and start to sing and everything and then this Jamaican homeless guy had came over and was listening and he was just watching him and stuff and then he would just he was moving his head and listening to the words he was saying and then out of nowhere the homeless guy, he 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 just started to say, 
one blood, one creation. It's a one God. Duliva, Duliva. Hallelujah in the highest praise. Hallelujah in the highest praise. And he kept on saying it over and over again. And then um, he started adding more words to, to, to spice up the song and spice up the rhythm that, that they was playing, that the that Carlos was playing. And then Carlos and him came in together and they started to say hallelujah, highest praise. And then one blood, one creation. It's about God. Do the leave out, do the leave out. And, and they just kept on singing and stuff. And at the end of it, and then Carlos, he was talking to him and said, and asked him where he was from and stuff. And he said he was from he was from Atlanta, Georgia. And he was talking about, and you shouldn't talk about how, how good God is and, and all the things that, that God do for people. And now that homeless guy, he's, he's a, he, he have a million hits on YouTube. He's, he's known on Instagram, Facebook, and people talk about him on Twitter. And he, now he's making thousands of dollars just going around, uh, going around singing and doing performances. And I'm pretty sure everybody can say that. That's, that's a good thing. And, and that's why you shouldn't judge a homeless person or a book by his cover. Because you, know what, you never know what they're going to be in the future. Just like Holly Berry, Jim Carrey, Steve Harvey, and Phil McGregor, a.k.a. Dr. Phil. Um, uh, Holly Berry, she and she went from living on the streets in Chicago when she went there to go pursue her film careers into making thousands, um, making films and um, ma making films and and being in films like like Catwoman, um, X Men, and so forth and so on. And and like I say, you, you can't just judge people. You have to give them time. Whenever they feel like they're ready, just to do something, and go to the next level, and go to the next step in their future, in their life, and become and get have a greater future, and then they will. And so and so, don't judge nobody. Just like Jim Carrey, he him and his family. And well, Jim Carrey, he went from being a janitor and stuff at a factory to living in a in a car in a van with his family, with his mom and and them to living in his sisters, his sisters' uh, driveway. And then he went on to into uh, working and do, oh, doing open comedy acts for comedians and um and comedians like like Barry Earned and um he, he did comedian he did comedian acts for like Barry Earn and and a couple of other people and that's how he became uh, famous and. And he ended up making a whole lot of money uh, doing that. Then he more opportunities open up so he can uh, become a comedian, have people do open acts for him and play in movies as a comedian. And he, you all know about Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, he had a hard time and stuff with his family because he wanted to go to college. He, he, was, from, he was from Virginia. He wanted to go to Virginia University and, um, and, and, and get a career doing that. He, he was a... Uh, a writer, a radio host. Uh, he he was on the radio. He he also did um. What else? He he did he did. Hold on for one second. Oh, and, and he was a comedian. He also did opening acts for the Apollo. He he was in the Apollo Theater, and he's he's known as the king of comedy now. And he also, and now he also hosts on Will, uh, not Will of Fortune, but Family Feud, and he's making nineteen million dollars a year now. So whatever, whatever it is that that um that you think about homeless people, if you think that they will never be able to do nothing, they don't have no brighter future, they do as long as they put their mind to it. So in conclusion, I want to say, don't judge a book by its cover, bitch. You never know what they what happened to them in the past. You never know what's going on in their future, or if they. Are are doing good and in a in the steps of of doing big things and greater things, bigger and greater things. And so, with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching my video, and I hope you enjoy it. And have a good night.